there, it's Natasha and thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I have these Spellbinders dies by Vicky P and they sold out in so, so fast the first time around, but they have just been restocked. So I thought I would give you an idea or two of what you can do with these. On the left is the one called Artful Brush and this is perfect size for card making. The elements that come in this one are beautiful and basic. That little bit there is the kind of top of the paintbrush that you can do on silver. It holds all the bristles in, so to speak. If you are more into art journaling and things, then the one in the centre, which is called Artful Blooms. This one has leaves and blooms and things. It is a much bigger paintbrush as well. And then on the right, this one has kind of butterflies and extra little bits and pieces. It just has a different shaped handle and all those extra little elements. This one is called Butterfly Burst. And again, I feel like this one is a better size for card making as well. Um, I'm going to be using the Artful Brush because I love the simplicity of this set. Now this kind of has this little wood grain pattern in the handle there, which I have cut out in some plain craft cardstock. I cut out the uh, bristle holder part in some silver mirror cardstock, and I'm going to create two quick brushes today for my really easy card to put together. This is a favorite card of mine. I'm not gonna lie, I really like this one, how it turned out. I did cut the bristles out 12 times all up. I have some mowed lawn and some salty ocean and these ones are going to color my bristles. Now these bristles are really cool because they actually fit side by side to fit in this brush perfectly. Uh, I'll show you a few of these things as we go along, but for now I chose to leave all of my uh, die cuts in the uh, original piece of paper. That just makes it a little bit easier. And I do have the uh, re-inkers of the oxides just because I was going to get a much more concentrated color. I add a tiny little bit of water just to make it move around a little bit more and then I'm just painting some of the blue on six of these so far and then I did also want to do the backs because I didn't want you to kind of um, I knew there was going to be lots of texture and things with the bristles so I didn't want to be able to see any kind of white stark white underneath so I did go ahead and do the backs as well and then using a little bit lighter uh, a little bit less I just did a little bit further up the paintbrush as well so it just wasn't quite as even. You know how paint kind of seeps up your paintbrush a little bit? I guess that's what I was thinking of. Then I'm moving on to the green, so a really nice concentrated bit. You do not have to be tidy with this part at all. This is paint on the bristles, so this was pretty easy. I just kind of whipped along really fast. Of course, I do have this sped up a little bit just to make it go quicker, but this part you don't have to be super specific with um, how it looks because it's paint, I guess. Then from here I wanted to just add a little bit more, if you kind of add some ink over top of that texture, it'll bring out that wood grain just a little bit more on the paintbrush handles. So I didn't even re-ink this, I just took my finger dauber from my little case there and I was able to add a little bit more ink over top. I think this is vintage photo distress oxide ink, that's the only brown uh, oxide ink that I have. Um, and so I didn't even re-ink it, there was plenty left on the brushes. Now this is where I can add that little silver bit and I mean you could make this in any color you want by the way it doesn't have to be silver but I just thought that's kind of that metal part that I often see on paintbrushes. I am no <laughs> perfectionist when it comes to uh, what paintbrushes should look like or how they should look but this was just kind of the picture that I had in my head and I've seen this done lots of different ways with this release. If you just google this set then I'm sure lots and lots of different ways will come up on how you can go about using these. Now this is where I'm going to start putting them all together. I did want to make sure that the bristles were nice and dry before I started pulling them out of the dies uh, there because um, if it were wet then it was going to tear it more easily. So I did zap them with a heat gun just to make sure all of that ink because I really did saturate them with the colour and the water. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that they were pretty dry before I take them out and the green ones I had not done so add a little bit more. Now this is the cool part. These actually fit side by side. And even better than that, they fit perfectly, two of them wide fit perfectly um, as the bristles to this brush. But I think if you just use two, it feels like they're a little bit empty, uh, so that's why I chose to go ahead and use six. You could probably get away with four, um, but I just wanted to make this really textured. Now I'm going to move this to the left a little bit more 
just because I don't want all the bristles lining up perfectly. And if I just put them right on top of each other, then they're just going to layer. Whereas I want these to be kind of all nice and separate. So I trim off that little piece of the edge and then easily I can add it to the end because these all fit together. And then that way, all of the bristles don't sit one on top of the other. And then I'm going to pop them uh, back for the top layer and that gives us kind of a relatively thick paintbrush and it looks like it's got lots of texture to it. Then I just pop a little bit more double sided tape and then this is where I can pop in my little handle and I have one paintbrush ready to go. Now obviously I'm doing exactly the same thing for both of them. You can place the handle lower or higher depending on how high you want your bristles to be. Uh, so I just sped through that little extra set there of me putting together the green one because exactly the same. But I do love these little paint brushes. I like how they turned out. Now as for the rest of the card that we need to put together, I'm going to trim down a little. Uh, this starts off, I trim down all of my own card fronts and card bases. And I make all of my card bases four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I make all of my card fronts exactly the same size. Often for my card fronts, I will end up trimming these down to be four by five and a quarter because that way it leaves a nice little white border for me. Now for this one, I decided to trim it down, but I also want a really strong black border. Now you could just add a matting layer here. That is a perfectly good way to go about this. But instead, I just use one piece of low tech tape. This is the mint tape from scrapbook.com. And I am using some VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, just the little finger dauber. And this is going to create a matting layer with without having to use the extra cardstock. I really like this because it takes out and eliminates a whole layer of cardstock and it also takes away the bulk, it takes away the weight, and it kind of streamlines the top of the card so there's kind of not another layer there to kind of dip down. Um, it's all just that one layer on the front. Now I just want a tiny little bit of texture in the background so it's not so plain. I'm using some Hickory Smoke Distress Oxide ink and I want just the most faint little bit of ink there to go through this tiles um, stencil. This one happens to be by Tim Holtz, but any stencils under the sun are going to work perfect. I wanted something kind of nondescript so the tiles is perfect because it kind of is neither here nor there. And I really like that just a little, little bit of ink gives that extra little bit of background noise here. Also, I think using an embossing folder would be a really good option here too. Now I know kind of where my paint brushes are going to go and I want to kind of add the paint, painted look I guess, uh, from these paint brushes. So I line them up where I want them to go. I'm using a relatively dry brush and I don't want much ink. I want those brush strokey looking strokes. So I want there to be not much ink and that's why I make sure most of the ink is off my brush before I pop it down. You can see I want it really kind of strokes and um, wispy and yeah that kind of look. So I'm going to put a little bit more down the bottom so it's a little bit heavier and then kind of wisp out. Um, and then I will do exactly the same for the blue thing. I just make sure I've got most of it off. And when I tried it there it just looked like it was a bit watery. I wanted it to be a little bit more concentrated. So I just kind of get the ink off until it gets that wispy look. And then once I know where I want it to go, I remove the paintbrush and kind of hold my finger where it should have gone and then start that kind of wispy, dry brushing, paintbrushy kind of look. So this was just a really easy, actually the whole card was really fun to put together. I really, really enjoyed this one. So I hope that you are enjoying this too. If you have uh, done something similar or you have gained inspiration from this video, then I would love it if you shared that with us. I love to see your cards and it is tricky sometimes uh, to email photos and things. So the easiest way that I can see them is over on our Facebook group and you can post them there. And that way I can see photos or videos of the cards that you have created uh, inspired by these videos. Now I chose to use this as a birthday card. This is going to a friend of mine and she's actually already received it and absolutely loved it. She did really love this one and it is still up weeks and weeks later. I filmed this a few weeks ago now um, and she still has it sitting up in her house which does make me smile every time I see it still sitting there. Um, so I used the All the Birthday stamp set and just stamped it out with some VersaFine Onyx Black Ink because that's the same color that we used for that faux matting layer as well. I'm going to pop this down onto my card base, which as I said was the four and a quarter by five and a half, and that just leaves that gorgeous little border. Then I can put the paint brushes in, <laughs> making sure that I get the green with the green, of course. Hopefully at this point I would 
manage not to mess that up. Um, I also have a links down in the description box below this video. I have links to all of the products that are used in this video, except for anything that has been discontinued or is no longer available. So unless it's that, then it should be down in the description box below. That includes the glue that I use, the scissors that I use, all those sorts of things, and the dies and stamps, the best that I can find, because I know that's probably one of the number one questions that I get asked is uh, where I purchase these from, or is there a link to it? Um, so I put them down there, even if you just want to kind of have a look at the product um, and see, have a kind of closer look at it, um, then you're able to click those links and actually have a look at it, rather than even if you don't need to purchase it. Um, that is kind of a good way that you can check it out a little bit more to see if you have something similar or something that might work the same. Um, I did think <laughs> this is the perfectionist within. It just wasn't quite wide enough for the brush, so I wanted to make it just a smidgy wider underneath those bristles. So that made me feel much better. Yes, this did hurt my heart a little bit to cut off that handle, but I knew that there was the full blue handle there, so that made me feel a little bit better, and you got the gist of the kind of paintbrushes. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you really enjoyed this. Other than that, I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thanks, bye!